is to you, Catherine Hale, who is a very good friend of mine anyway. Um, Catherine is an NHS midwife in the north of um, England in a place called Hexham. Um, she also practices as an independent midwife. But she's speaking to us today as the national coordinator of the Association of Radical Midwives. So over to you, Catherine. Thank you, Linda. Um, I'm going to talk today about the new vision which the Association of Radical Midwives has just published in 2013. Um, the Association of Radical Midwives it was an organization formed in 1976 which was started by student midwives who were alarmed by the increasing medicalization of childbirth. Um, they used the um, acronym ARM um, because they felt that their practice was very much dominated by the requirement to artificially rupture membranes, abbreviated as ARM, um, in order to induce labor. At the time, in the 1970s, it may have been similar in other countries too, there was a very, um, you know, a very great preponderance of induced labor, sometimes not very long after the due date, uh, and people felt that, um, that it was really um, due to hospitals wanting more women to give birth to their babies during office hours and weekdays. Um, the student midwives feared that they were becoming less midwives and more obstetric nurses, and that they wished to return to the original um, profession of midwifery, or the, the, the traditional profession of midwifery. And they used the word radical, um, meaning roots and origins from the Latin original, um, as uh, a sort of indication of that, that they were turning to the basics, the fundamentals of midwifery practice. Um, the Association of Radical Midwives um, is an organization which anyone can join. It, there are a lot of midwives who are members, but also women who have interest in childbirth and anybody else who's interested. Um, we aim to improve care to become more women-centered. We hold study days and conferences. Um, we've had, for the past few years, a national conference, um, which has been very successful each year. Um, and we have um, a national meeting quarterly. Um, and we try to have these in uh, different parts of the UK so that all members may have an opportunity to attend. We contribute to national consultations into midwifery and obstetric practice and provide support to mothers and to midwives and information uh, through a helpline and advice leaflets. And we have a UK midwifery discuss discussion list and helpline which has been much contributed to over the years from people all around the world. Um, We're members of the International Confederation of Midwives and the European Midwives Association. Um, we produce a quarterly magazine called Midwifery Matters. And one of our quarterly meetings um, extends into a gathering or a holiday or retreat um, for as many of us as who are able to go and we try to hold those in different parts of the countries as well so that more people may attend. We, uh, in the last few years, we, uh, we bought a yurt, uh, a Mongolian style uh, framed tent that we take to um, festivals to provide space for pregnant women and their families. Um, and we are involved in social media as are most people. We, are, we, ha we have charitable status, and um, most of us are volunteers, um, and our biggest income is through subscriptions, although we do sell um, a range of midwifery goods, and um, occasionally we do make profits from conferences and national meetings, and also retreats that we run. In 1986, 
the um, the members of ALM decided that they wished to um, to uh, promote women-centered care by producing a document which they called the vision of how they would like maternity services to develop. Um, and this was very much based on the idea of caseload midwifery and of uh, continuity of care for women by, by their midwives throughout the whole of the childbirth period. It was later taken up by um, initiatives such as Changing Childbirth in 1993 and Maternity Matters in 2006 and has had a lot of support generally in government documents. Um, the, the difficulty has been that although uh, government policy and various policy documents that have come out have supported the, um, the philosophy of ARM and the vision, um, it has proved much, much more difficult to put, um, you know, to put those policies into practice. In 2013, um, many years later, um, care for women in childbirth remains dominated by acute hospital services. Um, the birth rate has gone up as well in recent years, which has uh, uh, sort of uh, made things more difficult in that respect. Um, many midwives work in places where um, there isn't uh, really, there aren't really sufficient staff to um, give women one-to-one -one care, and um, obstetric staff and midwives are under a lot of pressure to process women through a system that is very overloaded, especially in the big cities. Um, midwives perhaps feel that they have become more obstetric nurses rather than midwives. Birth centers where they, um, where they exist are often under threat because they are seen as a, as a luxury service. Um, and it is felt that it's more cost effective to centralize care in the um, in the big tertiary centers where there is a full um, special care baby service, a neonatal intensive care service, and where um, a number of staff can be concentrated on a single site. Um, birth centers are often closed uh, for short periods as well um, when um, events occur such as understaffing or an incident has occurred to reassess. So it's, in some cases it's quite difficult to be certain you know, of the number of birth centers that may be available to women. Um, when this happens or when, when an, a previous obstetric unit becomes a birth center or a midwife-led unit, it's often portrayed in the media as um, a downgrading is a word often used, or a second-rate service, and obstetrics is looked on as an emergency service rather than like an emergency department or casualty department. Um, this, the, the existence of birth centers across the country is very, very variable and very patchy. In some parts of the country, there are a number of standalone birth centers and alongside obstetric unit birth centers and in other places there are none. So it's difficult for women all over the country to have um, um, you know, a complete freedom of choice. Um, we brought out uh, and devised a new vision for maternity care in response to the birthplace study of 2011. Um, Professor Le Leslie Page, uh, President of the Royal College of Midwives, kindly um, wrote our preface um, and um, she says, the new vision for maternity care will be of importance to all of us as we set out to improve the start of life for babies and their families, not only midwives and all those providing care, but also policy makers, leaders, managers and commissioners, all will find in it a way to to more life-affirming, more humane, more effective and cost-effective maternity services. The basic principles are, I guess, the basic principles that should, um, should inform all maternity care if we're truthful around the world. 
Care should promote the health and well-being of the woman and her baby primarily, and the mother is the central person in the process of care. Um, the relationship between the mother and the midwife is fundamental to good midwifery care. All childbearing women should have access to their own personal midwife throughout the childbearing period. All women should access, exercise fully informed choice in childbirth, including the right to decline treatment. Choices would include the type of care and carer, the place and manner of birth, which includes home birth, now enshrined in European law. A recent case in Hungary, um, um, under, under the argument of allowing uh, that women have a right to privacy, made it, um, um, you know, it made it mandatory that, uh, that, that women should be entitled to home birth. In the future, we feel that that could be best affected by midwives being based in the community, perhaps in, uh, under the kind of settings that general practitioners are presently uh, placed. Midwives do work in the community in this country at the moment, but um, they often work um, in conjunction um, to general practitioners' surgeries and are employed by acute hospital trusts, which means that their, the continuity of care is variable and they can often be um, pulled into the big obstetric hospitals to provide um, assistance when there are staff shortages or, or there is a huge number of people attending those centres. Um, we feel that birth centres should be promoted and that there should be more of them, that there should be more availability for all women in the country. Um, there is a good deal of evidence that um, birth centres have very good and very safe outcomes and that they um, reduce interventions in labour and women's satisfaction um, with their labours and their births is higher in those centres. Um, that there should be one-to-one -one women centred care, um, that a woman should feel that she is cared for by her midwife and others if necessary, but that she has that continuity with one known person. Um, and hospitals and birth centres should be staffed to support women, not to support an institution, not to provide support for an institution and more midwives should be appropriately trained for providing low-risk care as well as high-risk. Um, these are some of our uh, publications, the new vision and the, and the old vision in one of the magazines. Um, that's just a short presentation about our new vision for maternity care. And um, I'd like to answer any questions, please. Thank you very much then, Catherine. Um, that's very interesting. Um, can we have some questions, please, in the chat room? Um, I haven't noticed any as to the, uh, uh, so far. It's been mostly discussion about how to keep in touch, which is an important aspect of meeting in such an environment as this. Um, did I notice any mention of caseload holding? Could I ask about caseload holding? Catherine? Um, I, yes, sorry. Um, yes, um, in, in the vision, we feel that um, the ideal would be that midwives would carry a caseload of women each, um, not too large, to allow them to provide continuity of care, perhaps by a system in which they could work with a partner or a buddy or perhaps two or three midwives together, depending on how many hours they wish to work um, up to full time. And in that way, um, they could share their on-call, they could um, cover each other for holidays, and um, women would have continuity of care. Um, we feel that if, if that caseload care was based in the community, 
um, and midwives would have um, the opportunity to discuss cases and to debrief among themselves. Um, it would give them control over their work and job satisfaction. Um, Caseload projects in the past have sometimes um, been difficult to implement um, because the caseloads have been too large. The vision recommends that for um, full caseload midwifery, that a full-time midwife would have 28 cases a year. We lost you, Catherine. No, I was just wondering if you were having if you were going to speak, Linda, but had had difficulty with your microphone. Um, I'm just reading about okay. the um, case loading in New Zealand, which I've heard about. <laughs> um, ideally, we feel that this would be good for us in the UK. Um, that midwives could choose to be caseloading as they can in New Zealand um, and that would be paid on the basis of a per case basis, a per woman basis. I imagine that's how it works in New Zealand. I see somebody is saying yes, that, indeed. Um, have a look and see uh, that midwives... Yeah. Sorry, Linda. Go on, Karen. Catherine. You, no, Catherine, you, if you're reading the chat box, please just go ahead and answer the questions. Yeah. I'm not sure about Germany. I, I see somebody's asking about Germany. I don't know if anybody can comment on that. I think from contact with the International Confederation of Midwives, I think they do have a degree of independence, but I can't um, recall asking or hearing exactly how they, how they did that. Um, yes, it, it, it is, it's very difficult for people not to get burnt out if, if midwives are holding caseloads which are too, too large. Um, and it would still be perfectly possible, as I'm sure it is in New Zealand, for, um, for midwives who felt that it suited their circumstances better to continue to work as core hospital midwives they would still be needed to do that, I imagine. Um, I think there has to be an, an element of choice for the for the midwives when case loading because it can be it could be more difficult for some midwives at certain times of their lives with on call or birth when perhaps they have small children themselves. Um, the British new um, NHS bill um, works on a system uh, described as payment by, re payment by results and this does have modular payments as um, Cheryl Joy Christian from New Zealand says for antenatal, postnatal uh, labour and birth but there are certain difficulties with it. Um, it is felt by some midwives because if if women have a high risk of transferring to obstetric care, for instance, a woman having her first baby may have about a 45% risk of transfer to obstetric care, then um, there will be additional costs, a lot of additional costs for the individual midwife or the, um, the group that she's working with when they transfer that woman. And it might be in those cases that um, a situation would arise where um, midwives have done an awful lot of work, antenatal and, and labour work with a woman, but because the woman transferred a large amount of the fee would then go to the obstetric hospital and possibly also to the ambulances who, who might have performed the transfer. I don't think that our system has been set up with this in mind because these sort of difficulties also arise 
when women transfer from um, one hospital trust to another. Um, I'm just reading questions here. I, I was told by a midwife who worked in New Zealand that it can sometimes be a little bit difficult because women, of course, are quite entitled to um, change their care provider in sort of pregnancy or maybe you know right up to the time of the birth. And this also can be a problem for some midwives um, as regards their fee. Again, they may have given quite a lot of care and yet um, lose the main part of the, of the fee. Um, but I guess no system be, can be without its drawbacks. Um, yes, independent midwives have been working in the UK um, over the last many years and um, have had many satisfied clients and provided a good standard of care with very good outcomes. Uh, we've been collecting um, statistics to that effect for these last nine or ten years. And um, we are at the moment um, under a certain amount of pressure because in October of this year it becomes mandatory to have um, indemnity insurance um, and that insurance has not been available to individual midwives um, in this country and I'm sure in other countries um, for many many years now um, really since since the 1990s um, this is because of the um, the large risk involved in having a claim against the midwife. Claims themselves would be extremely rare, um, but if there was a claim um, that was that was found in favour of the claimant, the, uh, the payout could be six million and um, uh, it is said by um, insurance specialists that this could go up to ten million pounds in the near future. So understandably, insurance companies feel that even um, a risk of one such claim happening to any one midwife would wipe out most um, uh, most um, insurance uh, payments that have been made. Um, the Independent Midwives UK and other people are at the moment, the Royal College of Midwives and many others are campaigning on this subject now. Um, it may be possible for groups of midwives to contract into the NHS through social enterprise schemes and so on, but it's not really um, clear at the moment how how this is going to be after 25th of October when this, this law becomes um, becomes um, live in. Um, just reading down the question. Um, yes, I found that as an independent midwife, when I've worked independently, I'm reading about relationships. It it is it is a huge luxury and a privilege to be able to have a very um, a very developing and a close relationship with with an individual woman, because um, I think it's I think it's rewarding for both. I hope, um, as Joe London says, yes. If people if people feel that they're not having a rewarding relationship, then they they ought to they ought to change to another midwife indeed, because we can't get on with everybody. Um, and it is really really important. It is very rewarding because. In that situation, even if the outcome isn't exactly as the woman would choose, um, the re relationship and the, the belief and feeling that she has, um, that she's had control over what happened to her, that she's made choices that weren't um, in any way made under pressure, is it, it, it 
generally seems to me that people feel that, that this is very rewarding for them. And even, as I say, if the birth doesn't go as well as they expected or in the way that they expected, they generally feel at peace um, with, with their care and with what happened around the birth. Um, I, I'm just looking to see. It's very, it's very difficult to <laughs> read down the questions and talk and think at the same time. I apologise for that. Um, you're allowed to have thinking time, don't worry. Oh, thank you, Linda. Can you see or draw out anything else from the, the chat that's going on, Linda, that, um, that we ought to comment on? Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's been several questions about how the vision can be incorporated into um, the institutional support or political environment. Can we answer that one at all? Yes. Yes, I see that, yes. Um, we have just, oh, in the last week, circulated the vision around all the newly set up clinical commissioning groups which exist in the UK. They exist to, um, to buy services for the NHS effectively. Um, they are finding their feet at the moment, but I think perhaps we have an opportunity to, um, to interest people who aren't set in their idea of how things they, they should be, or indeed set in the way of having purchased services already, it might be a window of opportunity um, to be able to promote the vision and to see if we can't influence some of the clinical commissioning groups to set up the kind of maternity services that we would like. We've also um, sent um, copies to heads of midwifery and supervisors of midwifery where, where we can access them and indeed to some members of parliament and, um, and anybody else that we thought might be um, influential in this area. I think that, yes, as, as somebody is saying, we do need to follow this now. Having sent the vision out just this week, in time we hope for International Day of Midwife, um, as many of us as, as possible are going to try and um, get along to board meetings of clinical commissioning groups and try to influence um, what they do in that sort of way. Um, I believe that some some of us did try to um, be elected onto some of the boards, but I don't think we've had much success with that um, at the moment. But to, to be truthful, it seems that the new groups are finding their own feet in regards to how they're going to uh, go forward anyway. So um, I do think we have an opportunity to do that. Um, can you still hear me, Linda? Yes, indeed. I'm just letting you speak because you were doing so well. Yes. No, I, I just I just lost the screen for some reason just for a minute there, and I thought maybe I'd lost everything. That's fine. <laughs> um, no, no, you're I'm still just, here. I'm just Someone's asking down how again. they can get to see the vision. I've lost you again, Linda. Um, but um, I'm here. I'm here. You hear, can you hear me? We have a link on the website. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Right. So somebody's asking. Yes, yeah, I can indeed. Yes, yeah, someone's asking about getting hold of the vision. I keep losing you, Linda. Um, there's a link on the um, WW. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Um, you can find a link to it on our website, um, which is on the screen at the moment.
Are you still there, Linda? Okay, have we got any more questions? We've still got time Linda. for a few more questions. Yes, I'm still here. Um, just, just asking if anybody else has yes. got any more questions, it it maybe ones that we've missed, or any comments. Uh, Catherine, uh, Lorraine's pointed out an excellent question from Maureen Wahidi a little, uh, not very far ago, I think. Um, yes, oh, I see that. Yes, I see that higher up there. Um, yes, I absolutely agree, uh, Maureen, that the, the relationship is key and very difficult to develop within the present UK system. I've rarely had people disclose... Um, that they were a survivor of sexual abuse to me as a midwife in the NHS. And of course, on very short acquaintanceship, when you just meet somebody in labour, they're very unlikely to do so, although sometimes one does suspect that that may be the case by other things that occur during the midwifery care. So obviously, one tries to be careful to treat everybody with that degree of care that, that they might be uh, feeling some, um, some difficulties due to that past experience. When you know people well as a midwife, um, you usually find out if they, there is any, um, anything of that kind in their past. Maybe not straight away, often not straight away, but usually after you've known them for a time. Um, and I have found that women who use independent midwives, midwives and, and, and are wanting to pay for independent midwifery care, which they would have to do at the moment in this country, they, they often have got um, a very strong reason to want to be in control of what happens to them in the sense that they want to know that the person who's caring for them is somebody who has formed a relationship with them. Um, it is very difficult in the present system. As I say, even our community midwives often um, are um, not having very good continuity of care with women. And even where they have reasonable continuity of care for the antenatal and postnatal period, their time for appointments and chats with women antenatally is often very restricted to just a few minutes. Um, I'm looking for... Um, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just trying to find the question in blue that somebody's mentioned. Um, I can't find that at the moment. Um, Yes, community What's midwives. <laughs> yes, I'll scroll back. Hang on a sec. Um, I found it. I found it for you, Catherine. It okay. says, "What might the i What might the ideal increased midwifery training in low risk as well as high risk look like?" I think. Well, those are asking. Okay. I think uh, more time spent actually working with a midwife in perhaps an apprenticeship style of uh, care. One of my colleagues is um, very keen to promote um, an apprenticeship style of mentorship, one studentship, for want of a better word, um, where an individual student would work closely with um, a midwife who's case loading for a reasonable length of time in her training. At the moment, our students here, Linda will confirm this, uh, perhaps only spend about 50% of their time in clinical care. It's, it, there's been some pressure in some countries for that to be even less. I do feel that midwifery is a very, very practical, um, practical discipline. A high level of education is, of course, important and ability to analyse um, um, different uh, different areas is important, but I think students they they learn by role models, um, and it's it's learning how you communicate with a woman who is in different situations, whether in labour, antenatally or postnatally. Um, it, it's it's that that is what you learn by observation with a good role model. 
and it also helps students to build up their confidence in the normality of birth. I think having that that's the thing that midwives, student midwives need to learn fundamentally. They may then go on at a later time to develop their knowledge and skills in the high risk and the intensive care areas. Um, but the fundamental of midwifery is normal normal midwifery and based in the community. And um, I can see somebody, Shelley, saying she spent the whole of her first year with the Short Start Caseload team. I think you were look lucky, Shelley. <laughs> um, and I was quite, I didn't know this, um, but I was quite shocked when I had some mentorship training uh, recently to find that the practical component of the midwifery course was uh, relatively small, or smaller than I expected it to be. Um, yes. yes, Linda's saying there's a lot of emphasis on high risk. Um, it is important, of course, for women who are high risk and having uh, medical and um, health problems in pregnancy to have equally good care. Um, but I think that a student midwife needs to learn the basics first and then add on the layers thereafter because that is, you know, the basic midwifery which will serve her well in all settings, really. Um, yes, I can see somebody saying they, they ask their community midwife if they could be a Yes, and I see what Maureen says as regards women who have um, had problems with um, abuse in their past, sexual abuse in their past. Yes, I. it's a very moving thing to see the transformation that can occur in somebody who has felt um, such terrible trauma um, and how it can, it can just help them move on. And, develop in their lives and transfer that confidence onto their children and become a positive process, as Maureen said. Um, can you see any more? Point being made there? Yeah, there's a nice point there being made by Fiona, Catherine, about having caseload within their training. Yes, yes. Oh, that's very good. Where are you, where are you Fiona? Yes. Yes, a dude saying, yes. yes. But it, again, that, 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 in, in Preston. Oh, that's, yes, that's, that's great. Yes. I'm not far from there. I know it well. Andrea's asking about non-independent midwifery care. Uh, what I would call the mainstream NHS care, or perhaps um, what has been the recent tradition in NHS midwifery, has been that women visit um, their community midwife, who is generally based at the GP's, the general practitioner's surgery. Um, she would book for her care there and she would tell the midwife where she wished to have her baby in the local area. Although, as we said before, the, the, um, the, the choice can be restricted depending on what part of the country you live. Ideally, she should ask women if they would like a home birth or if they wish to give birth in a birth centre or an obstetric unit. Um, most women will have most of their antenatal care from the community midwife, although usually there's more than one community midwife that they will see through their pregnancy. And then when they go into labor, they will go to the hospital or birth center where they, they are to give birth and be cared for by a midwife that they don't know, usually, um, and possibly a number of midwives, depending on how long their labor is and whether the shift change happens during their labor. And then they would have perhaps a very short postnatal stay in the hospital or the birth center and then be discharged home to be visited again by 
hopefully the same community midwife, but sometimes a number of different community midwives, some of whom they may have met and others not. Um, the postnatal visiting in a lot of parts of the country is now extremely restricted. Um, I believe down in the southeast in the London area where, where, where there is a lot of pressure on services, women may get a visit on the first day home and perhaps the fifth day um, and maybe that's it. In a lot of areas, uh, women are expected to attend a postnatal clinic for their checks and some uh, breastfeeding support can be very limited um, as well. Sometimes in some areas, healthcare assistants and maternity assistants are used to provide breastfeeding support, but again, that's very patchy. Um, I think a lot of community midwives in the NHS are sorry that they aren't able to give um, longer to their, their caseload and to their postnatal uh, women that they have to visit. Um, but that's been cut down often um, to a very large extent compared to the um, um, There's lots of lovely discussion going on. There's lots of great discussion going on here, but I just have to warn you that we're almost at the end of our time. We've just got a few more minutes left. There was one person who asked a question that I thought was very um, pertinent, and that was, um, Gay, gay, gay wife further up, it says, yeah. should, a, a woman, should a woman who has been deemed to high risk, be high risk for home birth, prefers to stay at home, what are our options? Can the midwife stay with her? Um, yes, they can. Um, legally speaking, in the UK, if a woman chooses to have a home birth, um, whatever her situation, um, the service ought to be provided for her. In reality, um, there is often a great deal of pressure put on that woman to go into hospital, either because she is told that the community midwives may have too many other home births um, to attend at that time, or that, um, that she is risking her life or the baby's life. Um, sometimes this can be dealt with by the intervention of a supervisor of midwives, who, um, which is a legal uh, position in the UK enshrined um, in the 1902 Midwives Act. Um, a lot of women aren't aware that they may have recourse to a supervisor of midwives to discuss their care and indeed to, um, to help uh, facilitate their midwifery care. Um, in reality, many high-risk women who wish to have a home birth um, end up booking with an independent midwife because um, there's often so much pressure, although it may be covert rather than overt, uh, upon her to go into hospital. Occasionally, um, hospital trusts have employed independent midwives to provide high-risk home birth care to um, to uh, women who, whose requirements are quite specialised and most uh, community midwives and most midwives in general wouldn't feel confident in providing such as in cases where there are twins or a breech baby. Um, that, but that again is extremely um, patchy and varied. It really depends on the uh, situation in individual areas. Um, I feel that with ARM's vision, um, we could provide better continuity as well for high-risk women who do go into hospital too. Um, and of course, this is important um, as well. Um, I'm trying to read down Thank just you. for the... No, I think, I think we'll have to leave it there, Catherine, and you've okay. nicely brought the discussion back round to the vision, which was the purpose of this presentation anyway. So I want to thank you, Catherine, very much for talking us through um, the, uh, the, the, the dream, really, of the ARM and all midwives, really, as they look at it. Um, and, and also, thank you very much for um, having a very good discussion um, using the questions that have come from the, the delegates in the chat box. So thank you very much, Catherine. That was great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.
for helping me with that. I feel <laughs> you're welcome. Well, so 